one of the great things of being a professor in Cambridge is that we, even if we're no good, we get wonderful graduate students and wonderful postdocs who want to come and work with us. And going back quite a while now, um, back to the 1990s, uh, I was very lucky that Nia Tesla, who's of course now a professor here in electrical engineering, uh, decided he was coming to the UK and he did a little sort of, got a beauty parade of various groups in the UK and fortunately I won. So Nia came and it was a wonderful period of my research uh, where Nia was absolutely at the front of it. And he of course returned to his professorship here. And as he was leaving Gitty Frey, uh, who was finishing her PhD uh, at the uh, Weizmann, moved here, uh, well, moved to me. And again, we had a wonderful time of research where you know, she, as with Nia, brought things that I didn't know about. And the combination of what we did know about in Cambridge produced some lovely science. So since they've both returned to the Technion, I've maintained links because they're both very good friends and very good scientific colleagues. And more recently, I've had a wonderful PhD student, um, Jana van Zoff, who uh, was a graduate of the Technion, who uh, did her master's at Princeton, and she, she came to Cambridge. And she's just graduated. So it's a, a, a strong link. Uh, the the Technion students uh, are bright, and I think there's a, a great way that the teaching happens here, because I, I just find that the Technion people who've come to Cambridge have been fantastic. I mean, they're fantastic to start with, but I think they've, they approach science in a good way. I started out as a, just a scientist. I, I was a, well, I'm still in the Department of Physics, but I chose my problems out of curiosity. Uh, and of course, if you're an experimental scientist, you have to define an experiment. You have to make something, set up your, uh, uh, your sample so that you can get some good information from it. And what we were doing when we set out with our um, polymer carbon-based semiconductors was we were working out how to make useful devices, transistors and diodes, which originally were just making as platforms to be able to understand the basic semiconductor science. And it turned out that they're obviously useful. So we felt that we should uh, try and protect it, not throw the opportunity away. And in various ways that led us to starting companies. Uh, now it's three, one back in about 1990 on light emitting diodes and two more since then. I wouldn't say I'm a businessman, but what I have been concerned about is that you can see in the materials world that you can get a great result that, make, make, that makes a great letter in nature, but it isn't a recipe for how to manufacture. That piece of translating, if you like, discovery of, of a property to an engineered materials solution that can be picked up by industry, uh, there's a huge amount of work, and a lot of it is better done in industry, and our interest in keeping you know, control over it was, I suppose, behind the way we ended up forming companies. Well, the great lesson for me is that uh, I always try and hire people who are smarter than me, and that's true in industry as well as in the university. Uh, and the great pleasure of getting involved with startup companies is that you need a balance of skills. And there's something I can bring, but the, the real business skills we bring from elsewhere. And I then don't want to stand in anyone's, I, want to, I don't want to create a shadow that takes the pleasure away from those who are really doing the work. So I've tended to be very involved when I can really bring value. And then my role has tended to be advisory. And uh, I, I think that's worked well. So that's allowed me to stay primarily in the university because what in the end keeps me going is the, the sense that you know, we discover new things in the laboratory. Well, the big challenge for the 21st century uh, is to turn away from the, the silicon roadmap. The, 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 letter, the last half of the 20th century in the world of electronic materials was packing more and more onto less and less so that the silicon device gets smaller and smaller. So what it does is fantastic, but what we now need is 
a whole set of technologies that provide us with uh, efficient energy, energy generation, efficient energy storage, and uh, efficient energy usage. And when it comes to using materials, we need to, if you like, get the same level of sophistication that has been done in silicon on materials which we can manufacture at large scale. And here's the paradox. If you want to get a material that you can roll out by square meters that has very well-defined functionality that is affordable, uh, you need to control it at the nanometer scale. So it's sort of large-scale nanotechnology. I, I would say that nanotechnology is learning how to get materials to organize themselves so that we have the right structure, the right electronic structure, that we can get those very specific properties to make better solar cells, better batteries, better solid-state lights. So that is, a, I would say, a, a global challenge. All the great universities are finding different approaches but behind what they may describe their programs, uh, I think there is this common goal of joined up, scalable material science. It, this, the business of whether the, tr the traditional disciplines are the right uh, or organizational structure for what we do in research is, is interesting. Uh, of course, the, the structure of the disciplines was established a long time ago, and in detail it doesn't work. Where the traditional disciplines have a role is where there is a way of teaching, if you like, a toolkit, which you still need to learn. So I think the most interesting cross-disciplinary uh, research environments are those where you bring to peop together people who are trained in physics or trained in chemistry or trained in life sciences, to get them to work on common problems where there can be that communication. But I don't think that science has just um, emerged as a single um, toolkit. I think the toolkits still remain distinct. So the magic is to learn how to preserve the best of the traditional, but deploy it in an innovative way, and trying to arrange that research themes are those that naturally draw together, if you like, the, the new configurations of um, those with traditional skills is the, I mean, that's where the prizes will come from. Science, I think, if it is run well, has a great power um, of civilization. It is the universal language of our time. What is always remarkable is that people from anywhere in the world can work absolutely as equals. Um, they can bring with them their own heritage, their own traditions, but we work together wonderfully well. Um, I have students who come from, from all cultures. I have a number from various parts of the Islamic world um, who are wonderful. I have wonderful students who've come from, from Israel, from South America, from North America, from all parts of Asia. I think that we go, they go away with a great sense of, um, if you like, identity that is an international identity. It may be a Cambridge identity, but I think that that is, that is something very powerful that we, we should all, in science, work to foster. I don't think, I think that transcends boycotts. <laughs> well, the, the Harvey Prize means a huge amount to me. Um, first of all, uh, it's an extremely distinguished prize. Uh, the, the judges are very smart. I mean, if one looks at the list of former winners, this is a, a galaxy of stars. The, 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 these are people I feel humbled to be set alongside. And it's, I think the nicest thing about being given recognition is when you're receiving recognition from an institution and from people you know and regard as friends. So it's very special for me. And I love coming to the Technion because it's, uh, there's a sense of intellectual um, brilliance about the place. I, have, I always have fantastic conversations. I'm always challenged about my science. I go away, go back home with uh, new ideas.